Let's talk the favorites in this division right now, guys, and let's talk the Green Bay Packers. You can find them. The best number you can find is a minus 155 over at BetMGM for them to win the NFC North. If you want them to win the Super Bowl, if you think that the loss of Devontae Adams is not all that much of a thing, you can also find a 12-1 to on them to win the Super Bowl over at BetMGM. Adam, I am not in that camp. I look at this and I take a look at a team that loses Devontae Adams, but also loses Zadarius Smith and Billy Turner and Lucas Patrick and Dennis Kelly and Equinemius St. Brown and Marquez Valdez Scantling and Chandon Sullivan. And so all these names aren't names that really like, hey, for the casual fan, jump off the page and make you go, oh, man, wow, this is really terrible for these. I can't believe this is going to you know, be how this all works out. And you're going to try to replace the production in that offense of Devontae Adams with Sammy Watkins? Like, is that what we're going with here? <laughs> because we already know that he doesn't like any of the rookies. Like, he can't stand the rookies right now. That They're not running the right routes, and they don't know where to line up. So he's only going to go to people that he trusts in that, in that offense, at least at the beginning of the season anyway. Christian Watson apparently can't get it together. So I think that just because Aaron Rodgers is the quarterback, and I'm, I can't wait to hear your opinion on all this. Like, is he still one of the top five quarterbacks in the NFL? Arguably one of the top three quarterbacks in the NFL? Absolutely. But at some point, there has to be rational thought coming in of minus 155 for them to win a division in which the Vikings did get exponentially better, and I think the argument could be made that they got exponentially worse. So tell me what you, like, as we head in here, you know, August the 18th, what you see with this Packers squad. So take that number you just gave me, the minus 155, turn the implied probability around. Do you, Matt Brown, think that the Packers have a 61% chance to win the division this year? Absolutely not. Never. I don't either. Uh, I don't yeah. think it's that high. Do I think they should be the favorites right now? Yeah, they have to be the favorites coming in because, uh, you know, mm -hmm. Minnesota, for me, is one of those teams where we're going to get into the Vikings in a minute here. But every time I start to believe in Minnesota, something turns sideways. Now, I think what's going to turn it back the right way is the lack of Mike Zimmer. But when yeah. we talk about the Green Bay Packers here, look, Rodgers has gotten demonstrably worse under pressure the last couple of years. We don't know if David Bakhtiari is going to be available at left tackle for any length of time. Elton Jenkins is already hurt. Uh, in training camp, and they want him to be their swing tackle on both sides. And so when we talk about being able to protect Aaron Rodgers, well, that matters even more this year when he's trying to throw it a big Bob Tunyon, Alan Lazard, Christian Watkins, and uh, preseason Hall of Famer Romeo Dobbs. So when you look at this Packers team, you have to say to yourself, is the ceiling 13 wins again? Right? The ceiling has been up at 13 wins the last couple of years. Now, you can be the Devontae Adams doesn't matter. Everyone gets worse when they go away from Rodgers apologist if you want. Because over the last couple of years, seven games over three seasons, 31 points a game without Devontae Adams. I, if you want to bet me that they have another seven games at any point this year where they average 31 points per game, I'll take the other side of that. I will absolutely take the under on that. Aaron Rodgers is worth a lot, but minus 155 is too heavy on the Packers to win the division. I think realistically, this is probably about a... T I mean, I think the number's right on the win total, right? At 10 and a half. I, I think 11's probably a reasonable number. I think Rodgers can win you a number of close games on his own. Uh, I think LaFleur actually is a pretty solid coach when it comes to making the right decisions. But right now, as we stand today in the middle of August, there's no way that I see Green Bay as a 61% favorite to win the division. Steven, when we take a look at, at this squad, and I mean, listen, by no stretch am I trying to say that they're going to be bad. That is not where I'm going with this. But I mean, if you do look, it's going to be one of the worst wide receiver cores in all of the NFL. Like that's, uh, It's going to be one of the worst pass catch cores in all, the, in all the NFL. It's just the way it is. There's not a guy out there that... Again, unless one of these rookies just pulls a Jamar Chase on us, which we don't think that's going to happen, it's going to be tough for them to consistently move the chains. I mean, I understand you got a great backfield. You do. You got two really, really good running backs, and you still have Aaron Rodgers. But at some point, receivers are going to have to make a play for you if you're going to consistently move the ball up and down the field. And I think that whenever you look at what 
Aaron Rodgers is going to have to work with this year. I don't think that that is just something we can say, oh, it's definitely going to happen because it's Aaron Rodgers. He'll figure it out. He'll just figure out a way. And then you look at some of these other losses and stuff, and I, I think that you're looking at a team. I'm not I, – I'm – Look, I'm, I don't regret that I made the bet. I have an under 11.5 on this team as a win total. I did put that in. I think it's probably pretty close on them whenever you really do kind of break down the schedule and whatnot. But I expect this team to take a step back this year. And if I'm expecting the Lions to take a step forward to where those are no longer just complete slam dunk wins, if I think the Vikings are taking a step forward, which I do, and those are going to be either hard-fought games or losses or whatever, then I have to just kind of make my bets in accordance with how I think the season's going to play out. So I do have an under 11 and a half on, on this Vikings, I mean, on this uh, Packers squad, and, and I think that this is a division that's pretty way more wide open than the odds imply. Matt, if you look at the Super Bowl prices for the Packers and then the trickle down to all their other derivative markets, it's like they're still pricing them with Devontae Adams there. They are 10-1 to 1 at some books. That's ahead of the, the Rams. That's ahead of the Chargers. I just, I just think that's incorrect. I would have both of those teams over the Packers at this point. So I, I'm having trouble finding a good price to fade them at going into the season. But long term end game what is the ceiling of this team this is not a team that i think is going to play in the super bowl they have a lot of negative regression issues coming into the year five and one in games decided by a field goal or less last year that could flip and they went seven and zero in games against justin fields taylor heineke sean mannion tyler huntley and russell wilson and baker mayfield in their first games back from injury the rest of the games they went six and four like this sounds eerily familiar to the type of team and the type of schedule and, and benefits that the Dallas Cowboys had last year and, and what we talked about them as a team that can win regular season games against inferior opponents. But once you get to the postseason, are they going to be able to reach that ceiling to get to the final game of the year? So I, I think this is a, a team that I'm going to be watching very closely in terms of the injury report. We mentioned the offensive line, and when they're healthy, it's a very strong offensive line. But Bakhtiari, Jenkins, and Myers have had their fair share of health issues over the years. <clears throat> and when they didn't have those guys, they gave up a 32% pressure rate in the playoffs to the 49ers last year and got bounced and couldn't move the ball whatsoever past the first series of the game. For context, the Bills were the only team last year for the season that had a 30% pressure rate. So I think this team is extremely fragile. I think the coaching staff, for whatever reason, has stupidly been run heavy on first downs over the past few years, despite the fact that they have Aaron Rodgers. And I think losing Devontae Adams isn't going to make them more pass happy on first downs, which, is, which means they're going to have to run a lot more third downs if they're not efficient on first downs. So um, I think that there's a wide range of outcomes for this team with a, with a floor that is a lot lower than it's been in recent years. Not the end-all be-all, but again – you know, we, we like to look at everybody's information and the guys over at Football Outsiders, they do simulations of the season. They did one million sims of this upcoming season and the mean projection for this Packers team was 9.3 wins. So a full two games under the 11 and a half win total sitting out there for the Packers at some of the books. And so just again, not the end all be all. But we do take in all the information that we get out there. And again, after a million simulations, 9.3 wins for this Packers squad, only making the postseason 55% of the time in those simulations as well. So uh, Football Outsiders pretty down on this team. I'm pretty down on this team relative to where, you know, I think some of these other teams have either improved or some of the other teams that I think at least can be tricky somewhere along the way as they navigate the schedule. You do have games against the Bucks and Buffalo and the Rams, you know, out throughout the course of the season. A maybe much better Philadelphia Eagles team. I mean, there there are a bunch of games on this schedule that if the Packers aren't playing up to snuff that they could easily drop here. So a team that I don't like to win this division, especially at the price that's sitting here. I like the under win total. The only thing I did do, guys, and it is Maybe it's more of a, a hedge for me if I'm completely wrong about this team. But Aaron Rodgers, 
We always know. We hear this all the time. Why did he not throw the ball to Marcus Valdez-Scantling? Why did Equinemia St. Brown never become an off- a, a p- part of this offense? Why have receivers come and gone in there? Because this is a guy who talks all the time about, I'm going to get the ball to the people I trust. I'm going to throw the ball to people I trust. I took Aaron Jones for Offensive Player of the Year at 60-1 to because I think that we might find ourselves, at least early on in the season, with him lining up in the slot 40% of the time, you know, but like until these until these rookie receivers gain the trust of Aaron Rodgers, until he feels like he feels comfortable enough to throw them the ball, he's already a pretty good pass catching back as it is anyway. And you have a pretty easy out when you consider that their backfield is pretty deep to put him in the slot and use him as much more of a receiver, get the ball in his hands and let him do things with the ball. So I thought 61 was too long on Aaron Jones in an offense that I think Aaron Rodgers might say, okay. There's still an 80 to one, by the way, there's an 80 to one. There you go. An 80 to one on, on, on Aaron Jones for offensive player of the year. So I do think that is at least another way that you can go about betting this team. If, um, if you want to, but for me, I'm an under on the wins and I think that this team could actually end up, disappointing.